Hi everyone. Um, so this is Beck Tench again, um, recording today from the PhD offices at uh, the University of Washington's Information School, one of. Um, and uh, I received a, a, an email from a stranger on the internet this morning who had watched my videos um, that I made a few weeks, months ago. I don't even remember now. And months probably. Um, and, uh, and he was asking a question about how I get from um, kind of, I think he was asking a question about how I get from the reading um, and sort of the reading process to the zettling process in Tinderbox. And I thought it was an interesting question, and I just so happened to have read something yesterday that I need to get into Tinderbox. So I thought for, uh, you know, one of these quick take uh, videos that I might try that process and see what happens. I might just trash this at the end of it, um, but maybe I'll keep it and upload it. So, um, so it's an interesting question because uh, I don't exactly have an answer um, without without doing it. I think that what I do is uh, is, is in large part tacit or um, said another way, something that I can't really say why I do what I do. I just do it because that's the way I do it. So um, so here's the article that I've read um, and it's actually quite interesting. It's about um, how we design um, technology specifically and this person is writing um, mostly about uh, HCI, human computer interaction type of design, as opposed to all sorts of other kinds, um, and most specifically the theory that he's building his HCI stuff on is an architectural theory uh, of design. So you have um, the situation where we design things, and um, and uh, and somehow we're not good at it. I wonder why that is. And so this person is saying that uh, based on this other person, Christopher Alexander, who you may have heard of, he's the writer of a pattern language and I um, can't remember what his other book is, but anyway, a uh, big thinker in terms of architecture and we've used a lot of his thoughts in technology stuff. Um, so basically he says, for a long time, the way that design happened was unselfconscious in, in the sense that we weren't being particularly uh, pointed or purposeful about how we design things. It didn't create or need an expert to come in and design something. We built houses and cities and you know systems um, based on this concept of goodness of fit. Basically what we all do in our own homes which is we tweak here and there as we live and something is essentially designed to work well for the purposes that we need it to because we've lived in it and we've made it the way that it is by you know turning it this way or that or adding this or taking this away that away so what wackery is the name of the uh, author for this is saying we do is we um, need to do that in HCI right now HCI is totally based on experts researching and then having their genius moment and then delivering some designed thing and Wackery is saying what if we created technology that was open-ended that people lived with and was designed really purposefully to not actually have a purpose without that person tweaking it and adding or subtracting and making it what it needs to be. What would we design differently? How would our relationship with technologies be different? And particularly with problematic technologies, maybe this is a way to make them less problematic because we have the people that are using it influencing what it's used for. So that's essentially what I took away from the article. Okay, so I'm sure you were here to learn about Tinderbox and not about conceptual constructs like unselfconscious interaction, but there you go. So what I need to do now is take my experience of reading this article and put it into Tinderbox. So here's, here's the article. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, and I'm actually reading in Devon Think to Go or whatever it's called um, because this syncs to Devon Think right here in front of you um, and uh, and I like that I can search every article I've ever found in Devon Think that's been super super helpful and in fact I wouldn't have 
read this article. Um, had I not searched um, I, probably some combination of calm and slow, because I'm right now reading about slow technology and calm technology, and this article references both of them, but it's not an article that I found by searching for calm or slow technology, because it's actually just mentioning slow technology specifically as, uh, as sort of a kin approach to what, what this author is talking about. But like, um, anyway, without Devin think I wouldn't have discovered this article to read and I really like this article. So that's thumbs up to having all of your articles OCR'd and searchable. That's pretty cool. So I'm reading and Devin think to go because my annotations sink and it just feels necessary. I do not want to have lots and lots of PDFs triplicated everywhere. So got that. But also, as I said in the last video, I read with a pen in my hand. Now, lately, because GoodNotes 5 is like way better than GoodNotes 4, um, I don't know if you've played with it yet, but it's like the GoodNotes 4 designers used GoodNotes 4 and they got annoyed in the same ways that anyone who used GoodNotes 4, which is great, would be annoyed, and they fixed all the problems. So I'm very happy about GoodNotes 5. Um, so what I've been doing, let me find Wackery, is I've been making notes in GoodNotes 5 while I'm reading. This has been nice because before I was highlighting with my Apple Pencil and then I had my bullet journal and my pen, which is very enjoyable and still carry around everywhere with me, but I was having to switch pens and this just became like when you're sitting in a boat, in a ferry boat or on a train or something like this, this is just so much nicer to have just one thing. So I started writing my reading with a pen in hand notes in good notes instead of my bullet journal. So here I have some notes that I've made. Now I want you to notice, I hope you can see this, that this is a bullet right there. This is a dash. So as I took notes, I bulleted some and I dashed some. The reason I did that was because the bullets I thought were kind of zettel worthy and the dashes were notes that I made to myself. And so let me find a dash Okay, so here's a bullet. It seems to it seems important to note that the design of these objects is very objects is very purposeful, and the aesthetic quality is one that evokes potential, even though it may well lack clarity. So that is something that I want to get in my zettel somehow. But then the next note says dash. I agree that aesthetics matter so much, especially when use is to be determined by the user. And then I did a little acronym TBDU as a way to like think like, oh, well, that'd be cool if we if we had if it was if if we designed things so that the use was to be determined by the user so much that there was an acronym TBDU. So so I don't need to settle my agreement about TBDU or the, that aesthetics matter. That was just a thought I had. Um, here's another, um, which is basically a disagreement. So. Um, the author was talking about this other kind of parallel line of thought that is similar to unconscious, unselfconscious interaction called non infinito. And I haven't read anything about it. I don't know if I will, but I kind of had a, a disagreement type thought um, around how the author was characterizing non infinito. And so I wrote my disagreement in a dash. I'm not going to settle my disagreement necessarily. Maybe I will, but probably not. So I guess what my point is, is that these notes are, um, are my guide. So they're very important to read. I mean, like I couldn't settle an article without having written these notes. It would just be, it would lack cohesion or process. Like I'd have to I have to jump really big time every time I wanted to settle. While I'm reading, I'm writing the notes, and the notes will scaffold my next activity, which is the zettel. And one of the ways they scaffold the zettel is because there are bullets that have been indicated as zettles, and there are dashes that are just notes I'm taking as I'm writing things down. What are the dashes? I don't know. But it seems important to write them down, so I do. But I know when it's time to zettle that I'm only looking for the dots. Okay? All right, so... Oh, here we go. I'm actually going to take a slight break since it's probably getting long, and then I'll come back and do the transition. <laughs>